All right, on the old SAT, they would definitely make us do algebra here, but because we have a Desmos calculator, I would never, ever do the algebra here. I would absolutely just graph this and see what's going on. I'll show you the algebra at the end just in case, but uh, if, if you look here, I have graphed this already. So that is my equation, x squared plus x plus y squared plus y equals 199 over two. It very perfectly gives me a circle, so that's great. Um, and then they want the radius, and so I'm trying to figure out, you know, basically what's the distance across. Um, you got to be careful because they, for whatever reason, they're, they're always going to highlight like certain points, right? You can see these little dashes or these little dots um, on my circle. So for any thing you graph, they're going to, in most cases, put little dots for the intercepts, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So they did that here. That's what this dot is right here. It's, you notice the zero is the, the y-coordinate, right? So that they did that over here too. We can't use that, I don't think, to find the radius because you can kind of tell that the, the circle is a little shifted, right? You can see in the top, the top of the circle is a little bit below 10 and the bottom of the circle is a little bit below negative 10. So it's, it's not perfectly, the, the, the center of the circle is not the origin. It's not the, the middle of the graph. So because of that shift, the radius is going to get kind of played with a little bit when we are connecting those two points. They're not directly... Um, yeah, I should say they're not, it's not a diameter, right? The X axis here is not a diameter. However, we do get a diameter in the vertical direction. I don't know why it makes this choice, but Desmos looks like it graphs the, uh, the vertical diameter, which we can use. We just got to be careful. I'm going to zoom in here on this point, right? So again, if I touch it, you can see there's two points next to each other. They're still giving me the intercept. They're still giving me the, in this case, the Y intercept. But I don't want that because again, it's shifted slightly. I want this other point, which is the absolute minimum of the circle. And then if I scroll to the top, you see the same kind of parallel thing happens, right? We have the Y intercept, but that's a little off. You can see, you can, it's like a little bit curved down. The topmost point is the one we want. That's going to give us the, ra the, the radius eventually by getting the diameter first. So let me get those points, right? So that is the point, negative 0 0.5, 9.5. That's the top. And again, scroll down. Let's find the other one. So it's this one. That's negative 0 0.5 and negative 10.5, right? So notice that the x coordinate is the same. So these are literally, yeah, directly across from each other on the top and the bottom, but it's that it's that y distance between them that matters. So I'm really just gonna take the difference uh, between the 9.5 and the negative 10.5. So just do a little subtraction, 9.5 minus negative 10.5, don't forget the double negative. And I guess I can figure this out without the calculator, but might as well, that's 20. Okay, now that's the diameter. Diameter is 20. And I'm going to zoom out here and just show you again on the graph. Ooh, let's see if I can do it this way. Okay. You can kind of tell, right? The radius looks like it's about 10, right? There's that shift. And, you know, maybe we could have estimated and gotten that, but just to prove it, right? We now have the diameter is 20. You can kind of tell, right? It's a little bit below 10. It's a little bit below negative 10. But overall, that's about 20. And so if they want the radius, remember the radius is just half the diameter. So our radius is 10. And that is the answer. This is 100% how I would do this on the test. There is no reason for me to go through the algebra because the algebra is really tedious. But uh, it does work. The graph though, you know, my graphing calculator doesn't really handle circles well, but the Desmos one does. And so that's why whenever I have to graph things, I'm using Desmos. I'm bringing my normal calculator for just normal arithmetic, but for any graphing, I'm doing it here. The Desmos is really good for that. So let's see how we would do the algebra just in case you're curious. We would need to do something called complete the square. And this is an annoying thing that everyone's learned and then everyone forgets because it doesn't have a lot of uses in, in, in math. So you learn it, you take the test on it, it comes up a little bit for vertex, it comes up for circles, but then as soon as that test is over, you never think about it again because unlike other things like factoring, the, complete the square doesn't really have a lot of use. So you it kind of dies uh, because you don't practice it. But if we wanted to do this algebraically, if we had to do it for some reason, we would need to complete the square. So what we're supposed to do is focus on the two components and try to turn them into kind of squared terms. So the x squared plus x, I need to find a, a number to add 
that's going to make this so that I can kind of factor it into the same thing. So basically the rule is you take half of the B term and square it. So half of one is half and then square it. So that should be plus one fourth. And that lets me, if I wanted to then factor this, it would be x plus a half times x plus a half. Think about it, right? That would be x squared plus half x plus half x, which simplifies to plus x, and then one half times one half is one fourth. And we would never write it like that. We would write it as x plus one half squared because that's kind of how the normal circle equation is gonna look. So if we did the same thing for the y's, luckily it's the same number, but in this same case, we would be getting um, a term that we can write as a squared term. And then now we have most of the actual circle equation. We have x plus one half squared plus y plus one half squared, and that's equal to 199 over two. But we did a bad thing. We just went and added some random numbers to our equation. You can't do that. So in order to add them, we need to balance things out. So we, we add them on the left side of these equations. They're kind of now buried in those uh, parentheses terms. But to balance that, we have to add them to the right side as well. So we're going to add a fourth and another fourth for the two parts. Together, that makes a half. So 199 halves plus 1 half is going to be 200 halves which is 100. And um, let me see how I can show this. The way this works, I guess I'll write the whole equation, um, y plus a half squared. And the way this works is if we had the actual um, generic formula for a circle, it looks like this, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. h and k are the center, meaning our center for this is um, negative one half, negative one half, and kind of looks like that, right? It's a little shifted to the left and down, right? So that's negative, negative, a little bit, just a small piece. Um, and then the radius, oop, go away, there we go. The radius is squared in the formula, but it will not look squared in the actual equation that we generate. So we have to be careful of that, right? The radius here is not 100, it's the square root of 100, so our radius is 10, which is what we found. I hope you agree with me that that algebra is crazy, hard to remember, hard to do, and um, easy to mess up, and uh, therefore we would want to avoid it if, if at all possible. So anytime you have an equation, um, try to graph it, see what happens. Um, a lot of times you'll be able to kind of skip a lot of algebra just by visually seeing what's going on, and Desmos is good enough that it lets us find a lot of points that we might want, that instead of using a formula, we can just tap them on the screen and there you go, you get your answer.